Well, it's not over yet. How did you say he'd come? Any time after four. After four, right? You do think I'm doing the right thing, don't you? Well, you're not doing anything. You're letting an estate agent value your house. Nothing more. No, you do think I should move. No, not unless you want to. It's simply an option because the place is too big for you. But if you're happy here, fine. It's not a question of being happy. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, it's not as simple as that. No, it isn't, Jack. Not for anybody. So I'll see if Andy's turned up. minutes left. What's the score? One nil to Farnley. Is that all? The boss did name me as sub. Yeah, he switched Vince Tyson so we didn't start with ten men. Then I can play then, can't I? No problem. <sighs> oh, ritual, ritual. Lucky drink. Lucky step ups. Ah, uh, lucky belch. I'm sorry. It's okay. I booked the restaurant for 7.30. Is that too early? No. Oh, wish we were there now. Otherwise it would have been a rush mm. for me to catch the train. Going up to Mum's? I haven't forgotten. I'll tell you what, look, we give this bloke another five minutes, then we'll phone him up and tell him not to bother, shall we? No. Jack Frost. Oh, hello, Arthur. Oh, it's the weekend and you're busy. Hmm? Yeah, Wallace and Eaton have just uh, fished a body out of the river. What? It's a, a suspicious death. I don't know about suspicious. Um, he just apparently just disappeared from the hospital. Hello, Barry Clark from Holmes and Array. What do you mean, appendix? Yeah, all right. No, I'll be right there. OK, fine. I'm sorry, Shirley. Can you do the honours? Mm. Arthur is in a panic. I've just got to go. 
All right, I'll see you later. <clears throat> oh, very nice to meet you. <laughs> Sorry, you're Mr. Frost's? No, I'm not. life extinct. All right. Will the hospital want him back? Well, I hardly think so. Taking his appendix out now would be a bit superfluous, wouldn't it? Anyway, we've got his name, though, have we? Yeah, on the hospital bracelet. Colin Drysdale. Oh, OK. Except the bloke what landed him. Yes, Gov. I see. All right, then, go on, you carry on. All right, sir. No, not really. I was only after Roach. <laughs> Competition, was it, then, the fishing? No. Pity. If you'd been judged by weight, you'd have been laughing. <laughs> I mean, it's every small club's dream to get into the first round proper of the FA Cup, and for us, it's very much a stepping stone towards our real goal, which is ultimately a place in the Football League. And today's game? Well, we've had some uh, close scraps with Farnley over the years. It's a local derby, stakes are high. It's always very close. But on the day, our finishing was something else, wasn't it? I think our manager was the only person in the ground not having triple heart attacks. But then, that's the secret of our success. Roy Bignall's calm, thoughtful, professional approach. Uh, well, that's not the only secret. There is, of course, um... Lady Carr. Here, as always, Mr Chairman. What do you reckon against City in the next round, boss? Just last ten minutes instead of twenty. That should be enough, yeah? <laughs> How's the head, Aidy? Sore. Bloody sore. In fact, I'm seeing double again. Either that or I'm kicking two balls in the air. Painful. Get one of this, he's out of his skull. Anyone for fire side? Come on, Sandy, off your arse! You like crap every week. Let's see if you play crap as well. Come on, let's move that ball. No. 
see what have we got here. Reasonable jacket. Ah. Ah, Colin Joseph Drysdale, 15 Lightbourne Avenue, Denton. He only gave us his name. We don't search patients. Let me see. Well, we'd better find out if there's a Mrs. Drysdale. Shall I go? That's right, Gov. I need the practice. Oh, go on. The thing is, the kid took us a bit of kick in the head. Now, if he pegs out, well, we could be looking at manslaughter. Oh, no, thanks. I've already got a body. I find one's enough for a weekend. Mrs. Drysdale? Yes? WPC Hazel Wallace. I'm sorry to trouble you. Could I come in, please? Mr. Colin Joseph Drysdale. Yes. Why? What's he done? Would you like to sit down? Mrs. Drysdale, I'm afraid I may have some rather bad news for you. A man's body was found in the river this afternoon. The initial identification suggests it may be your husband. I'm terribly sorry. So am I. Darling! I'm sorry about this, Gov. That's all right. It's not your fault. Anyway, just because a guy says he's Colin Drysdale doesn't mean to say that he is. No, no, he is. As soon as I saw him, I recognised him and the name. He's a head teacher at Denton High School. Oh. Oh, well. Chin up. I just wanted to say how sorry we are for this very unfortunate misunderstanding. I should damn well think so. Mrs. Drysdale, this is a genuine apology for a genuine mistake, none of which has anything to do with W.P.C. Wallace here. Now, do you mind if I sit down? No? Good, thank you. Um, Mr. Drysdale, have you any idea how our mystery man in the river came by your driving licence? I trust that is your driving licence and it's not a forgery. No, no, it's definitely mine. Um, it's Mark's here. And uh, this fold where I used to have it in a different wallet. And you haven't lent it to anyone recently? Don't be stupid. Why would he lend it to anybody? Mr. Dreiser? No. And you haven't been burgled or mugged? I'm afraid not. And I have no idea where and when I might have lost it. I don't normally carry it around with me, you see. Just now and then as ID for a cheque. I mean, it could have been missing for weeks. You haven't lost your chequebook as well, or credit cards? No, I've checked. Only this. I must have dropped it in the shop and this guy's picked it up. I wonder what he's been doing with it. It's very uncharitable of you, Mrs. Drysdale. He might have been trying to return it. Oh, don't get clever, please. We have enough cause for complaint already. Wendy, it's all right. It's not all right. It was me that opened the door to her. And suppose you'd been out somewhere. Imagine what I'd have felt. But I wasn't. I was here, alive. That's all that matters. I appreciate your attitude, Mr. Drysdale. Um, I shouldn't be asking this, and you can say no if you want to, but we've no other means of identifying the body. I wondered if you'd be willing to take a look. You want Colin to look at the body? For God's sake! Wendy, I don't mind. No? Well, if it's convenient. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Drysdale, what a pleasant surprise. I just had a tip-off. You Please were... not. Oh, right. 
So we're talking about anguish caused by police cock-up. Go home, Sandy, will you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that straight away, thanks. Well, he's alive. So what's possible brain damage? Sorry I couldn't help. Oh, that's all right, sir. Oh, I didn't expect much. It was just a possibility. It's like the driving license. Oh, by the way, can I have it back, please? What? The driving license. It's in your pocket. No, uh, I mean, what for? Well, it's the only thing we've got. I want to check it for fingerprints. I mean, you never know. Oh, is it possible to have yours? Fingerprints? For elimination purposes. Uh, you can always come into the Nick on Monday. Or I could send someone to your house, if that's more convenient. Uh, no, um, I'll come into the station. Wendy's been upset enough. Yes. As you said to her, you're still alive, but the man who isn't you... isn't so lucky. So, the appendix man was in here from start to finish? Yes. Wasn't moved to another ward? There were no beds. In any case, he was going into theatre ASAP. You see. Do you have any visitors? Did anyone see him? Not so far as we know. Could, uh, could he have been carried out, you know? Could he have gone out on a, on a trolley or a wheelchair? I really think someone would have noticed that. Oh, good. He, uh, did ask for a bottle. Hmm? To relieve himself. But we were so busy that... Yes, that you forgot all about him. So, here is your patient in agony, with a raging temperature, bursting for a pee. So, what does he do? He gets up, he wanders about, looking for a loo. Is that possible? Is this door always locked? Should be. But is it? I don't have time to stand guard. Please. I hope when we find his next of kin, they sue for negligence. Thank you, sister. What do you want to do about A.D. Carr? Who? The footballer. Shouldn't he be priority? Well, is he more dead than my appendix, man? No, slightly less so at the moment. Oh. But at least we know who he is. Half Denton's waiting for the next bulletin. Yes, yeah, all right, I'm sorry. And we know who kicked it. Name's Terry Blakeway. It's on the club's match video, if you want to look. Yes, certainly do. Just give me a minute. Bloody hell. I don't know about manslaughter, Jack, but if Eddie Carr dies, we could be talking murder here. Yes, all right. Thank you very much. Oh, well, uh, Mrs. Fisher for me. Would you call her back? Oh, no. What time? Hours ago. Are you in a... Uh... No! Oh, here we go. Are you ready for this? No. Is he going to be all right, Mr. Russ? I really don't know, Sean. It's time he went home. Nothing you can do.
early. I'm so sorry. You should be. You missed a good dinner. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm getting better, though, aren't I? Usually, I miss the train. Uh, phone me. Her mum, she got the number. Yes, yes, I've got it. Yes, you give it to me. Right, yeah, give right. it then. Yeah. Goodbye. Oh, all right. Jack, mm. uh, you've heard the news on A.D. Carr. Who? The footballer? Uh, no, sir. Well, he's still in a coma. When you interviewing Blakeway? Blakeway? The man who kicked him in the head, without provocation and with clear intent. Ah, yes. Um, today, sir. Yes, today. Good. Jack! Mm. Without the money and the sheer hard work that Mike Ross has put into it, Denton probably wouldn't have a football club. That's called dedication, in case you're interested. I think the least that we can do is to take the assault on his star player seriously. Good. Don't you? So. Oh. Any messages for me that haven't got through? Phone call? No. But you've got a visitor. Hmm? All right. Yes. Inspector Frost? Yes. Terry Blakeway. Ah. Oh. No. Hello. Just come with me. We appreciate your assistance, Mr. Blakeway. Well, obviously. I mean, I'm gutted about Aidy. Flat must be an old biggest match of their history coming up and no star striker. Yes. His mum must be very upset on their behalf. Look, I'm saying I'm sorry, right, but it's out of order people pointing a finger at me. You kicked him in the head. Which part of Barcelona the game? Bodies and boots flying about. Football is a contact sport. Football, Mr Blakeway. Shouldn't you be able to spot the difference between a ball and a head, even from your great height? Well, he was lying on a ball. It was an accident. That's not what the referee said. Or the video. You know, we've been having a look at your disciplinary record. You've had enough red cards in your career to tile a bathroom. So, I've got a short fuse, but the doctor examined him there and there on the pitch, and he said that he was fit to continue. Yes, the medical expression is concussion and compression. You better remember that, because that's what they're going to be talking about when you go to court. You see, you can get a bang on the head that might not seem serious at the time. But, of course, then you can be unlucky. Blood vessels in the brain can be damaged. The skull slowly fills up with blood. Until suddenly, out you go. Just like that. Forever. If he dies, we could be looking at a case of manslaughter here, son if not worse. Manslaughter? But it was a football match. It's not real life. What do you mean, it's not real life? It's a muddy patch of grass. You don't step outside the law once you run onto it. You kicked Aidy Carr three times in the head and he's in a coma. What do you want? A one-match suspension? Well, you should try playing against him, giving it this all the time, winding you up. It's not loud enough for the ref to hear. It's just in your ear. It's like having your own personal abuse system. Oh, and that upset your Corinthian standards of sportsmanship, did it? Look, he was a snidey little kid. He deserved a kick in the head. Yes! Sergeant Hanlon entering the room. Sorry, Jack. Mr Mullet wants to speak to you. I've just spoken to the hospital. A.D. Carr. He's dead. No. It's worse, in a way. It wasn't concussion. They haven't finished the toxicology tests yet, but they think it's drugs. Thank you for your time. 
We'll be in touch. Oh, uh, fingerprints. Oh. Lungs waterlogged. No sign of injury. No distinguishing marks. You what? Pathologist report. Uh, that is dead male one, isn't it? The unidentified in the river. Yeah, just having a look. Mm. Well. Certainly not a businessman's clubber, is it? No. Certainly not a vagrant's either. Everything's relatively clean, not odds and sods. Shoes are the right size. Mm. Just warm. Good quality-ish. Just warm. Well, it's fallen on hard times then. Mentally ill, maybe. Why don't we just bung it through the coroner's office? Jumpers are their responsibility. Who said he jumped? Would you be able to jump if you were doubled up with appendicitis? Well, there's no evidence he was pushed. Not by Drysdale or by anybody else. And if he didn't jump, he just fell. End of story, not a CID problem. No, not end of story. I want to know who he is. Was. Thank you. <clears throat> You're the governor. Yeah, fine. I wouldn't have done it for them. No harm, Wendy, is that? It's humiliating. It doesn't matter anyway. I mean, who cares if somebody else did touch the license before he did? No, it doesn't matter. So why make a fuss? Because I'm your wife, and I don't like you being hassled. Excuse me, Shirley Fisher. She's on leave this week, in Yorkshire, I believe. Yes, I know. I just wondered, did she leave a phone number? No, sorry. Got anything, Sean? Okay. Yeah, but you just could get me saying, couldn't you? He's not dead, for God's sake. But if he's never going to play again, just a piece of his kit, do a boat lace even. Please, uh, used to his best mates. You just could get me saying, please, please. It, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. All right, all right. Don't wait yourself. You got your key, Jamie? What? Aidy's flat. Yeah, but we got time. Come on. Otherwise, he's going to top himself with his scarf. Yes? I wanted to see Mason. He was full of mesenbuterol, which I'm informed is the latest designer sports drug. Graded dosage over a period of time boosts performance. But Carr had enough in his system to send him jumping over the grandstand. Before it blew several thousand fuses in his brain. Silly boy. Quite. The damage is severe and permanent. If he survives at all, he'll probably never walk again, let alone play football. Oh, dear. I've informed Mike Ross are holding a press conference. I want a presence there to show just how seriously we're concerned about drugs. Any drugs. The tragic stupidity message needs reinforcing at every opportunity. Job for you, I think. Yes, sir.
sorry, mate. Nothing for you. Yeah, but you... Shut it. Well, tragically, today's news will tarnish Shady's image. And leave us all trying to comprehend why he should have used drugs. I mean, he was arguably the best, most exciting player in non-league football. He didn't need chemical assistance. But used drugs, he evidently did. So we just have to hope that some good will come from the resultant tragedy and that other young sportsmen will be deterred from going down that futile and dangerous road. Mr Ross, you're saying you've got no idea why Edie took drugs. You've got a very successful team here this season. Pressures to go on winning must be enormous. Coaching methods are pretty intense. An awful lot was always expected of Aidy. You're saying he felt pressured into using drugs to keep overachieving? No, no, no. Presumably he took them of his own volition. I'm just suggesting a possible reason why. Maybe he didn't. You know, take them of his own volition. I mean, it was a massive overdose. Maybe someone gave it to him. Just a thought. Mr. Frost. Yes. Look, what you are saying is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, so I'm so sorry, Mr. Ross, to interrupt your press conference. Oh, to hell with a press conference. You are pointing the finger of suspicion at anybody that's anything to do with this club. Not necessarily because that drug could have been ingested up to two hours before he went into coma. Let's face it, Aidy was late. He was always bloody late. There you are. But why don't we pick up the ball and run with it from here, hmm? I'll start organising some statement taking for tomorrow, and who knows, we might be able to rule out foul play and get back to the tragic fallibility of golden youth. Well, let's start from the top, shall we? Are you going to be available for an interview tomorrow morning? No, I'm not. Because my transport manager is off sick and I've got three sites to keep tabs on. Yes, sir. What business is that, then? Gravel extraction. Is that all right, Mr Frost? Mm. It's only football that keeps me sane. Or, or did. Nice one, mate. I like it. Sergeant Wells says he needs some help with statement taking. Yeah. The football club. Oh, right, yes. Well, you can chase up Chairman Ross if he isn't extracting gravel. Who's that? Yeah. That's the appendix man. Now we dragged out the river. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. It's been circulated already, then. Mm. Full blanket coverage, why not? Every nick in the country, every local newspaper. Plus every guest house, hostel and hotel in Denton. Well, missing persons haven't come up with anything. Well, I thought you had hope with a driving licence. No, just someone else's name, that's all. But it's early days. I mean, missing persons usually... Yes, but supposing he isn't missing, that's what I'm saying. I mean, to be missing, someone's got to miss you. I mean, think about it. You live and you die. And the difference doesn't affect a single person in the whole world. It's as if you hadn't been here in the first place. Terrible thing, that. To be unmissed. Unidentified. It happens to a thousand people every year, Gov. Yes. Well, it's not going to happen to this one. Not if I can help it. Of course, you know what it is. The old git's afraid that's how he's going to end up. And you could go and look at A.D. Carr's flat. Right. Ah, Mike Cross tells me you stirred up a hornet's nest of the football club. Well, that's what I'm here for, sir. 
Yes. But to suggest that someone gave him an overdose, potentially, that's murder. Well, why not? They say that uh, sport is a substitute for war. That's why so many people like it. And I've got six people wanting to give interviews. So, you live upstairs, you heard glass breaking, then noise down here, but you didn't do anything about it. Well, if I'd seen anything, I would have done. Hardly gonna bother Aid you now, though, is it? And this was last Saturday afternoon? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, about three o'clock. Anyway, I'm surprised his mates didn't notice anything. Mates? Yeah. From the football. Paul and Jamie, they were here. When? God, there's some sick people about. <laughs> yeah. Come on in. What I want to say is I can totally understand the chairman being up the wall about this... your thought about Eddie having been, you know... Turned into a cabbage because someone hates his guts. Yeah, well, whatever. But there's no way Eddie was doing drugs himself. Not sports stuff anywhere. Steroids, mesembutrol, anything. He was too bloody arrogant for a start. He knew how good he was without that crap. And anyway, he was ambitious. He wouldn't risk screwing up his future. One of the big clubs would have certainly been in for him by the end of the season. And they're very hot when it comes to medical tests. That sort of stuff would show up no matter how clever you were. So? So I'm telling you, it wasn't me, because the moving finger's bound to point this way. Why? Because I put out the kit and the drinks. Every player's kit on the bench, in the dressing room, before each game. And a carton of glucose orange beside each one. Now, all the other players had theirs at half time. But because Eddie was so late, his drink was still there by his peg for most of the game. So what you're saying is, someone could have spiked it? I'm not saying anything, except I didn't. It was fine when he got here. And I was in there with him every second till he went out there on that pitch. It's all right, all right, calm down. Did you actually see Aidy drink from the carton? Yeah, he always had a couple of swigs. It was part of his pre-match ritual. What happens to them? The empty cartons? Just bunged in the bin. In the dressing room. Groundsman gets shot of the rubbish when he comes here this afternoon. We'd better go and have a look at them now, then, hadn't we? That's the point. They've already gone. Back in training, are we? Sympathetic employers, mate. Only four days to a big mess, and this one's for AD. The whole town feels it. <laughs> well, almost. Suppose you notice what happened to the shrine. Yes. So this is where they throw the empty cartons, is it? Yeah. Did AD throw his? Oh, I don't know. He hadn't finished it. I did. I threw it in the bin before he did the finger pointing. Sorry? You are? Vince Tyson. I got pulled off to make way for that tart when he finally turned up on Saturday. And I was playing well giving it 200% for the club, but off. So I was a bit wound up when I got back in here. I threw his drink against the wall. In absence of his head, it fell in a bin. Hmm. Did it split? Should have done the way I slung it. Go. Right. Look. Get this over to the lab. Tell them I want it tested for mesembutyrol or any other related steroid. Tell them I want the report today, if not sooner. Have you been over to Aidy's flat? Certainly have. Breaking on the right. Maybe report here in Breaking Right, hit him! No! In, in, in! Come on, on your feet, back in line next! That's it! That's it! Watch that ball! Right, come on. Bury him now! Come on, better. And again, better. come on. Come on, next. Come yeah, on. go on, don't get in time. That's it. And again, come on. Right, come on. Come on. That's it. Now get it. Right. Well, Mr. Big, Big Knob, looks like somebody had a grudge against come your on. golden boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
What that message outside? Mm. Some maniac family supporter. Possibly. He is better, yes! What do they call this? The beautiful game? Every successful team needs a little steel. Is that what your coaching gives them, is it? A bit of steel? No. I'll leave that to Dave Leecroft. Straight on the bloody board, man. There it is. Forget him. Hit him. What I do is instill self-belief. You take moderate players like Paul Gower, Ray Walsh, Dean Wilkes, and you tell them they're good. And if they do everything that you ask of them on a match, they get even better. Yeah, well, I don't want to worry you. But I was hoping to take away some of your drink cartons for drug testing. But they've disappeared, all of them. I'm wondering whether your lads are playing out of their heads as well as out of their skins. I despise drugs, Mr. Frost. And I despise anyone that uses them. Paul! Where the hell have you been? Your car! Come on, man. Nasty things seem to be happening all over, don't they? I, uh, I did tell your boss that uh, today was going to be difficult. This is a nightmare for me, and your Mr Frost doesn't seem to realise. And I'm not talking about the club being dragged through the mud. My club, mind, I'm talking about AD and the drugs thing. And I'm not saying that, you know, he's like a son to me. Any of that crap. I'm... It's just that I did bring him to the club in the first place and, you know, I've watched him blossom. Look, I've done this out for you, okay, and signed it. If you need it on police notepaper, I'll have to come to the station next week, okay? Well, yeah, it's fine, thanks. You know, to be honest, I find your Inspector Frost a bit of a prat. Yeah, a lot of people think so. There's nothing in here anyway. No, I didn't hold out much hope. Here, have you visited the local waste tip? It's very nice, they tell me. I'll see you later. Anything for me on the drugs? Nope. I've got a really good scoop I'm working on. Buy your pint. Tell you about it. Nope. I'm unsnubbable, you know. Do you keep an index on football teams? No. No, all right. Check these names out anyway, then, will you? For what? Well, I should like one of them to have form for poisoning. But don't feel under any pressure. Right. Driving licence. You Socko left it with me. What, they found an alien print, then? On the wallet, yeah. So I had a quick skim through my card kiters. Yeah? Got a match for you. Hmm. Darren Matthews. <laughs> Hello, Darren. How's your luck? Same as usual. 
Oh, sorry, you lost. Anyway, it's a waste of money, son. So um, this will crack, at least I'll live longer. Mm. Do you recognise this? Yeah, it's called a driving licence. Correct, and it's got your thumbprint on it. What did you do, nick it or buy it? Oh, I'm a dealer, Mr Frost, not a common thief. <laughs> oh, yes. So? Look, I'll deny this if you got me the nick, right? But I'll give a tenner for it. When? Last Friday, innit? Who'd you buy it from? I'm afraid I can't divulge that. Oh, let's put it another way. Who did you sell it to? I never. I lost it, you see? Just as I was giving her the dosh, you lot come in, more banded. A drugs bust. I had to drop everything and leg it. I thought you said you didn't do drugs. Well, I don't. You still got to run, though. Otherwise, people think you're a plum. That's very true. So, it was a woman, then? Her? You said, as you were giving her the dosh? Did I? Mm. Since you were getting deaf in your old age. So, what did you do? Drop the licence on the floor? Let's put it this way. I didn't have it when I got outside. All right. Have you ever seen the, this guy before? Hmm? Was he in here on Friday? I don't know. He was a bit forgettable, though, innit? Yeah. Ah, Cart. You know Darren Matthews, don't you? The Toy Town Yardie. Yes, that's it. I want you to keep a watch on him for a few hours down at the arcade, see who he does business with, female. Oh, you want know the machines? Oh, I go. Good evening, Mr. Drysdale. I did call it your house, but... Uh... I uh, don't finish at the same time as the pupils, unfortunately. Uh -huh. I just thought you might be interested. We know where your driving licence was last Friday. It was dropped on the floor by a young lad in Fun City. <laughs> it's an amusement arcade in Farrow Road. Prior to that, he bought it for ten quid from a woman. Well, no, I'm, uh, I'm not particularly interested. But I would like it back, my license. Wendy and I are driving to France at half term. Is that all right? Yes, of course. You've no idea who the woman might be? No. Why are you so bothered, anyway? Hmm? Oh, I'm a lucky man, sir. I get paid for being nosy. The one. The rest were negative, but that one's positive for mass and butyrol, and it's got 80 cars prints on it. The scrapings on the wall were positive too. So it was 80s, and it was spiked. Yep. The only question is, who buy? Now that's one question, George. The other question is, why?
Aaron scoreline. Blake. Then Brian Gale. Beyond Lee. Another defender there. Here Hello. Now, Scott Green. Loses out to Whitehouse. Hello. So then, lads, what do you reckon? Grudge against the club? Yeah, of course. Or it could be City picking off the team one by one, so we've got no one left by Saturday. <laughs> you may jest, but it's not just 80, is it? And there's Paul Gower's car. What next? Yeah, but vandalism's one thing. What's happened to 80 is something else. What do you reckon? I'm afraid we haven't been able to contact his mother. She's lucky then, isn't she? So anyway, I followed the girl. She went to the East Dean estate, visited Tonya Reese. Buying drugs then? Well, she was in there less than five minutes, so it's a reasonable assumption. Oh. I lost her afterwards. She hopped on a 72 bus. So at the arcade, was anyone else doing business with Darren? Apart from a couple of lads, she was the only one. So what do you reckon then? She's a dipper, flogging what she can get to support her habit. Yeah. Except she looked more like a Tom than a dipper. Mm. Well, actually, she looked more like a schoolgirl. But then I'm getting old. Unlike you, of course, girl. Of course. If anybody wants me, I'm visiting Tonya Reese. Oh, by the way, stick this in the tumble dryer when it's finished, will you? Now, you've heard of Bone China. Well, this is Red China all the way from the Orient. Oh, all right, all right, all right, late in Orient. Now, 20 quality pieces per set. And what am I asking, ladies and gentlemen? 30 quid? Not even 20 quid, not even 15 quid. I'm asking 10 quid the lot. 10 quid for your finest Red China all, all the way from Murderer. the or Orient. Murderer! You killed him, say it! You killed him, say it! I never killed anyone, you stupid little prat. He's not even dead. Not dead. Because his heart's still beating. You bastard! I saw you. I was behind the goal. You kicked his head in. He was the best in your crap. <laughs> hey! No. What's this about, Terry? Football. Sean Everett, Ada's number one fan. I want him nicked. Yeah, of course. Cheer up. Let's have Supergirl on the next tour. Hello, Tonya. My, well, Justin's grown, isn't he? How old is he? Two. Two? You're still making ends meet, then. It's all right, Tonya. I'm just trying to trace a customer. A visitor. A girl, white. Short brown hair. Blue jeans. Multicoloured top. Sixteen, trying to look twenty. She was seen leaving your place about half past five yesterday evening. Thought she might be an old school friend. 
Well, I know that you and Darren Matthews went to Denton High School together. And she seems to be a mutual friend. It's all right, Tonya. She's just a... It's just a piece of gravel I'm trying to shake out my shoe. Oh, well. On the other hand, I can always phone the Nick and wait here until they arrive with a search warrant. I sent her away. Only do puff. <laughs> Only? Yeah, well, you'll just have to argue that with the social services when they find out. Not that I would grass on you. I think you're a good mother. Her name's Nikki. Is that a real name or a professional name? Both. Ah! She lives in Kennedy House. I don't know which number. Thank you. Ah, uh, hello. Is that Nikki? Oh, um... I was just wondering if I could make an appointment. Well, you know, as soon as you're free. What? Yeah, that would be fine. Fine. Yeah. I'll come round now then. Right, uh, where exactly are you? Oh, right. All right. OK. Um, my name's Jack, by the way. Sorry, love. Police. Oh, I say. What are you after? Something for nothing? No, not at all. I want to know if you've uh, ever seen this before. It's got prints on. Yours may be among them. This is Darren Bloody Matthews, is it? He was useless at school. And he still is useless. Sell it to him, did you? Well, if you can call ten quid a sell. Should have had the bottle to hang on to it. Well, Mr Drysdale probably would have paid a damn sight more than a tenner for it. Oh, yeah, what? Blackmail? Blackmail? No. Reward for safe return, that's all. But I needed the cash too quick. You do know who he is? Yes. How'd you come by it, then? The licence? I'm a Tom and he's a punter. How do you think? Didn't recognise me in the street, though. Give him quite a shock when we got back here. Nicola Bulmer, X4 and 5C. He didn't change his mind, though. In fact, he enjoyed it all the more. Steal from all your punters, do you? Look, things fall out of people's pockets, especially those who insist on having a shower before they go home, to get clean. Oh, by the way, have you ever seen this guy before? No. Why was he done? Probably nothing, ever. Well, I don't know, Squire. Maybe you were a darn sight happier being Mr. Nobody. At least it wouldn't have mattered if you lost a phone number. Yeah, but where do you draw the line, eh? Between no ties, no hassle and nothingness. Yes! Sorry, Gov, I thought you had someone in here. No, not really. Witness statements, the football club. Oh, yes, right. Did you catch up with Ross? Yes, no problem. It's all much for muchness with all the others. Um, arrived at the club at 2 o'clock, hospitality for the Farney officials till 2.45. Normal seat in the stand for the duration of the match, including half-time. Then dressing room congratulations and press conference. Stayed till the news came from the hospital about 80. Went home half past six. As I say, they're all much for muchness. So, basically, what we're saying is, 
Anyone could have spiked the drink and anyone could have removed the carton. That's not my fault, Gov. No. No, you're right, I'm sorry. Anyway, why are you doing this? Where's George Toolan? He's gone to pick up Sean Everett. Who? The boy in the market. Criminal damage and GBH. Oh, yes. That's right. I want to have a word with him. Hero worship can do funny things. And Paul Gower and Jamie Todd, Aidy's mates. Well, the two that seem to have been at his flat? Yeah, their address is on the statement. They share a flat in Beaumont Road. Yes, I think I ought to have a word with those two. Right. Thank you, Hazel. You better start getting a grip. It's not your car that was done. It ain't you that's been kept awake. Well, don't leave your phone by the bed, then. You've been to hospital. You've seen AD. We're still OK, Paul. So we tough it out, right? What else can we do? Yeah? Detective Inspector Frost. Yeah, I know. What do you want? I want to come in. I also want to know what give it back means. Ah, oh, sorry to call so late. You weren't going out anywhere, were you? No. No. So, you two were at 80's flat Monday night. Why didn't you report the damage? Aidy gets overdosed. His shrine gets desecrated. Your car gets vandalised. What next? Well, the question is, who? So what are you going to tell him? Huh? Just what? Everything. I've had enough! OK. Right. And what then? What do you mean, what then? What then? Does it make us safe, Dimbo? Any safer than AD? All right! Jamie and AD are in the building game. In a small way. Just the three of us. And, um... Well, we go out and about looking for work. What, crazy pave your drive, love, very cheap, that sort of thing? Nothing wrong with that. No, 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 all right, there's nothing wrong with that. Let's just go on. We come across this place over in Martian Village. Looked in a bit of a state. Roof slates, pointing and such. So, we knocked at the door. To see if we could be a service like. And this old guy lives there. About 80. Not Gaga, or anything. So we say about the roof slates and... He greets us with open arms. Been meaning to have them done for ages, like. Naturally, we tried it on a bit. Told them the whole roof needed doing if it was going to look like a decent job, you know? And he said, yeah. And that's how it started. You mean you did the whole roof when only a few slates needed replacing? Well, we didn't do the whole roof, no. No, but you charged him for it, though. He seemed perfectly happy. All right. What was this man's name? Adams. Go on, go on, Karen. What happened then? We went through the whole house. Chimneys, roof joists, central eating. And whatever figure we quoted, he just said yeah and paid it. Do you mean you renovated the whole house? He didn't seem to notice or care. Just wrote the checks, made us cups of tea, and put up with a mess. How long did this go on for? 
three or four months. Till his money ran out. Oh! How much was it altogether then? Hey? How much money did he pay you? 30 grand. I'm not proud of it. There was nothing illegal. We gave him the estimates, he accepted them, we did the work. Most of it, anyway. After a fashion. Then, a couple of weeks ago, this bird turns up on Lady's doorstep. Turns out she's the old guy's granddaughter, just arrived back from New Zealand or somewhere. Demands the money back. Aidy tells her to spin on his finger, shuts the door, then everything starts going ape. So you think it's his granddaughter causing all the mayhem because she wants the money back? Yeah. She's obviously paid some psycho to do us over. Oh, why not then? As you're both scared witless, why don't you give her the money back? Because we've spent it. Ten grand each don't last long. And you reckon it was her psycho that put A.D. on a life support? You saw what happened to A.D.'s flat? To my car? You were here just now. What do you think? I think that you two are the lowest forms of animal life I've ever met. Mr. Adams? Yes? Detective Inspector Frost, Denton Police. You... I've come about your building work, sir. Oh. Well, you'd better come in, then. Thank you. But I think you'll find that everything is in order. I didn't know that half the things needed doing, you know. I'm very lucky they were so on the ball. Yeah. Do you mind if I have a look round, sir? Uh, no, of course not. Thank you. Kirsty was very cross when she saw it all. But as I said to her, if she ever wanted to sell the place after I've gone, she'd have no chance if it didn't meet with building regulations mm. and EEC directives, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, you know, girls don't understand these things, but you can't just shut your eyes and pretend that the rules don't exist. Oh, no, no. no. Kirsty, uh, that would be your granddaughter, would it, sir? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Over from New Zealand. All uh, right. uh, would you like to see her? Yeah, I've got a photo. She's a lovely girl. Yes, yeah, thank you. Mind the stairs. They're a bit, um... The builders had to replace one or two treads. And uh, it, it's a month or two before they settle. Oh. And, of course, the whole place needs redecorating now. Oh. And I've no money for that. None at all. However, it doesn't really matter. It's structurally sound and regulation-proof, and that's the main thing. Now. Very pretty. Yes. She's lovely, isn't she? Full of life, too. Quite an athlete. And the only one in the family who keeps in touch. Still, New Zealand is a long way away. <laughs> so? Kirsty's never forgotten her old granddad. <clears throat> she used to spend her school holidays here, you know. Mm -hmm. Is um, she staying here now? Uh, only off and on, travelling and visiting old friends at the moment. Mm. Oh, I see. Would you like to see the rest of the house? Yeah, I've lived here over 60 years, you know. So, you think this Kirsty Adams could be responsible? No, not for the drug overdose, I don't know. Though I do think she's responsible for the property damage. Todd and Gower seem to think she employed a heavy, but I don't know. Felt like a woman when I tried to nick the paint thrower. God. 
When you see what that scum have done to her granddad's house. Then she has to be a suspect for the overdose. She's clearly unbalanced. I'm attending a fundraising function with Mike this evening. Who? Uh, Mike Ross. I wanted to give him some good news. Pity. We've no idea where to find her. No idea at all. Okay. Maybe she'll finish the job before we can catch her. I sincerely hope not. So do I. Now, Jack. Yes? Nothing on your football team. What? Denton Athletic. Oh. Just three juvenile cautions between a lot of them. Except the chairman's had a couple of run-ins with Inland Revenue. September the 18th, 1989, June the 24th, Yes, 19th. yes, all right, all right. Eighty cars not a tax enforcer, though, is he? I mean, he's just a snidey little git who cons people out of their life savings. Go, go. Yeah, Colin Drysdale's here. Right. Hello. Ah, hello there, Mr. Drysdale. I was uh, just passing. Uh, wondered if you'd finished with my driving license. Your driving li Your driving license? Yes, yes. Oh, of course, yes, of course I. Have. I um. Yeah, well, you saved me a journey, saved me knocking on your door and upsetting your, your lady wife again. There you go. Thank you. Your lady wife seems a very loyal and caring person. I may say so. Anyway, um, as I said the other evening, it looks like our man in the river simply picked it up. And we've established who the woman was. Well, you lost it. Well, that's it, as far as we're concerned. It's all over. And that is confidential information. Oh, yes, yes. Unless, of course, you wish to tell your wife yourself, sir. It was just a one-off, you know. Yes, you're right. Wendy is very caring and loyal. She's also extremely boring, actually. Is that right? We could just go for it from the ferry and try to get to Reims all in one hit. Or we could uh, meander about a bit. Go to Agincourt, Longs, Arras. Do you need anything? What? To drive in France. Apart from your license. Push him right through, mate, you know, help to prevent crime. Hello, Jack. Hello. I still have the spare keys. Kate, the cleaners. Oh, right. Why didn't you phone me at Mum's? I lost the phone number. And I knew that I couldn't look her up because I knew her name wasn't Fisher. Oh. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I had hoped you might phone me. I'm sorry too, Jack, but it can't all come from me. Not all the time. No, no, I know, I know. How is she, by the way, your mum? Not too good. Oh, sorry. I saw the uh, for sale sign for the house outside. Oh, you are interested. In spite of running away last Saturday. Hmm? No, I am interested. Of course I'm interested. Well, the agent said in its current condition the house could sell for anything between 80 and 100. 
So I thought, test the market and find out. Yes, yeah, I mean, no, that's a good idea. But as I've said several thousand times in the past month, whether you move or not is entirely up to you. I'm not pressurising you into anything. No, I know it's an option. But what are the options? That's what I want to know. Perfectly simple. You could um, buy something smaller, flat, or you could rent, or you could find yourself a landlady. Or we could move in together. Was that an option that you had in mind? Is that why you ran away? Because you were frightened it might be. What happens is it just, you know, just gets inside your head. The appendix man was someone's son. Brother, maybe. Husband. Even a father. We all touch someone's hand on our way through the dance. Yeah. But there's a difference in uh, touching and holding. I do appreciate how difficult it is for you, Jack. Commitment. After your marriage and everything. But I've been on the receiving end. The guy walked out. Divorce. Yes, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is that I can put that behind me. I care enough about you to say I'll risk it. The question is, do you? I'd like another glass of wine. In a minute. Come on, Sean. Your mum's worried sick. Right. Here we are. Rise and shine. Would you like the curtains open? Please. Right. There you are. I've got to go, unfortunately. Mm. 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 Right, I'll see you later. Right. <sighs> and uh, you can leave the for sale sign up. He was clean. Never did drugs in his whole life. Well, nobody's saying that he did, Sean. No, no. It was Blakeway that killed him. Big ugly bastard. Sean. Aidy's not dead. He'll never play football again, will he? See, Blakeway's a moron. He doesn't understand. Nobody understands. Only Mr. Ross. Understands what, Sean? Well, what Aidy was all about. Well, he was a brilliant footballer. I mean, even I understand that. No, it's, it's more than that. It's, he enjoyed it. He, oh, he made you feel... Oh, exhilarated. Oh, I don't know what the word is. 
It's just the sheer glory of being good at saying. I, I mean, you watched him and you know football's totally pointless. But it didn't matter. See, because it's just it's exhilaration. This is. That's what you got from watching him. It was, it was perfection. In his own way, you win or lose, that not matter. Mr. Ross understands. He knows how I feel. I was outside the ground on Saturday night. He did not tell me to clear off and stop being stupid. No, he just left me there. I mean, everyone else had long gone. But he just left me there. Alone. When you said that everyone else had long gone, what time would that have been? Are you talking about, what, half past six-ish? No. It was dark. About eight o'clock. about my scoop after all, then. Service area, M4, taken last week. That's Big Noor. That is Jerry Palmer. Who? Jerry Palmer. Manager, Barrington United, First Division Club, loads of money. Oh. They've had scouts at every Denton game this season watching A.D. Carr. But the point is, when Jerry Palmer shakes hands at a service station, he means a transfer deal's on the table. Aidy was all but on his way to fame and fortune when, crunch, the fickle finger of fate chose otherwise. That's your scoop, is it? Ah, no, it's in the beginning. The thing is, Jerry Palmer's bungs are legendary. You know, a uh, quiet little backhander to the manager of the other team, help oil the wheels. <laughs> Roy Bignall stood to make 25 grand. What? 10%. Do you mean that Barrington were going to pay, what, £250,000 for a little git like A.D. Carr? And paying two grand a week when he started. But my Barrington sources tell me that A.D. turned it down, wouldn't move. Wanted to hold out in case Liverpool or Man United came in from the real glamour clubs. So, Bignall had 25 grand snatched from his tight little mitt. And the kudos of selling on a new star, because he's really into kudos, is big nor thinks the coach is more important than the players. He likes control. That is why he hated Aidy's guts. Oh, come on, Sandy. I mean, that's all right for the newspapers, but really. That £250,000, though, that would have gone, what, to Denton Athletic Club, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Company's house. Hmm? Company's house, Cardiff. Give him a ring, make an appointment, will you? Thanks. Jog! Sorry, he's not here. He's not at home either. He'll be around tomorrow, won't he? Eh? Not much. Oh. Sprint! Good morning. Good morning. 
Have you two lads looked under your seats? Hey. Police escort. No extra charge. All right, lads. Relax. Nothing to worry about. Just yet. Excuse me a minute. Thank you. <coughs> I join you, Mr. Bignall. Sure. Thank you. <coughs> Never heard you down as a football fan. Me? Oh no, not me, no. That's a team game, isn't it? I'm not a team person. What do you do on journeys like this, you know? What do you do? Do you play cards? What do you do? Tell jokes, have a chat? I like a good story, me, when I'm travelling. Shall I tell you a story? Yeah, whatever you like. Pass it to time. Oh. Well, once upon a time, Baron Hardup had this great big castle. He also had a troop of acrobats. And every Saturday, all the people would go onto the village green to watch the acrobats perform because they were the finest for miles around. And some said they were the finest in the whole of England. Especially one acrobat, the youngest. Well, he could turn so many somersaults without touching the ground that people said that he could fly. <laughs> well, this made Baron Hardup very proud. But although the Baron was proud, he was also a very worried man. He was because his castle was falling down and he hadn't got any gold in his coffers to repair it. But then, one day, a wealthy prince came to visit because he'd heard about the acrobats and especially about the boy who could fly. Well, when he saw them, he gasped in wonder, just like all the villagers had done. And he went up to the Baron and he said to the Baron, he said, Baron, if you give me the boy that can fly, I'll give you 250 gold pieces. Well, the Baron thought, with 250 gold pieces, I can repair my castle and live happily ever after. But the boy didn't want to go with the wealthy prince. He wanted to stay in the village until the king came to visit because he knew if the king paid a visit, the king would take him back to the royal court, and that is where the boy wanted to be. Well, of course, this made Baron hard up very angry, because he could see that this was his last chance of saving his castle from falling down, and the boy wouldn't help, even after all the Baron had done for him. So angry and desperate was the Baron, and he lost all reason. <coughs> and he put poison in the boy's cup. And the boy never flew again. your heads up. We're going there with pride. Yes? Yes! And this one's for Eddie. Yeah! Am I right? Company's house informs us that your main company has a current borrowing requirement of three quarters of a million. When the offer for Eddie Carr came in, I... I really did think my prayers had been answered. I wasn't going to steal the quarter of a million, just move it around a bit. 
He would have gone into the club in the end. All he had to do was sign. But Barrington weren't good enough for a toe rag like him, the local hero. For what? Huh? Being able to kick a football. You work all your life, 24 hours a day, and you end up in the hands of someone like that. And he wouldn't save me. I actually think he enjoyed saying no. So I thought, all right, stuff you. Let's give you a problem for once. Stupid. So stupid. I just thought we'd go ape and be labelled a druggie for a bit. I just hope he can't remember the way he used to be. Well, there's one consolation. If he stays in a coma for 365 days, you can't be done for murder. Make sure you're still here at half time. Talk this out. My grandfather is dead. You killed him. What do you want me to say? Thank you? Like he did when you conned him out of everything you had? No! 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 Come! Get him! It's dirty! It's all right. It's all right. Thank you. Ah, I appreciate your coming in on a Saturday, sir. Don't try and patronise me, Jack. Well, Denton one three one. Never believe. mind the game. What about Mike Ross? Still time, Gov. He doesn't have to be buried for months. Yeah. Well, he can always make a name for himself in the stiffs. Stiffs. The reserves. Don't you know anything about sport? Here. 
It doesn't matter what we can prove against these guys. It isn't going to be worth the hassle for you. I know that. Why do you think... Any more than pressing charges against you is going to get them anywhere. Believe me. I don't think you're going to get your granddad's money back. It, it doesn't matter about the money. Not now. I oh, know, I'm sorry. He was a very lucky man to have known someone who cared so much. <laughs>